We're going to go through a quick uh, walkthrough of your farm tracks insulation kit. First we have the primary cable uh, connects to your power, the data logger itself and brings the uh, signals up from the sensors. We have a sensor interconnect cable, the optical sensors themselves, two brackets for the sensors, a miscellaneous hardware kit, a GPS antenna, and the data logger itself. Okay, before we begin, we we'll want to go through some of the tools you want to have on hand. A square, pencil or, or felt marker, some masking tape, center punch, 532nd drill bit, 3 quarter inch step drill bit, a round file, measuring tape, crimpers, pop rivet tool, a drill, and for most harvesters it's quite tight on the inside, a angle drill is quite helpful. First off for sensor insulation, let's talk about what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to do is get the sensors as high as possible, but you still have to have access to the inside and the outside of the clean grain elevator and have the sensor in the middle of the column where the grain is being lifted by the paddles. We measure an offset from the center of the bottom bearing up to where the center of the optical sensor resides. For most harvesters, we'll have that number, that offset in a table. So for this harvester, which is part of the New Holland CR series, we use 62 inches up from the center of the bearing and 1.75 inches forward from the back of the elevator column. So here I'm marking my 62 inches up from the bottom of the, uh, of the bearing. Using masking tape, once you have your height from the center bearing marked, you can simply use a square to transpose that height around to the end, across the back, and then around to the back side. For most harvesters, you want to place the sensor in the center of the column uh, from the back of the uh, clean grain elevator. On this harvester, it's 1.75 inches. So we mark 1.75 on our tape on both the inside and the outside. We already had a bracket installed on this harvester, but the inside mark will be 1.75 inches in from the back, same height as on the front. Certain harvesters, due to the geometry of the chain itself, we have to cheat slightly to the back of the, uh, of the center line. Um, this would be specifically the TR series that we're aware of. So if we have a measurement supplied in the table, please use that. Once you have your sensor locations marked, use a center punch to mark their locations. Drill a pilot hole using your 532nds drill bit. And then using a 3 quarter inch step drill, you drill up to full size. This machine has already been pre-drilled. After drilling, use a rat tail file to deeper the edges of the hole. Here's a little tip for some of the installations like the John Deere's for the clean grain elevator is mounted quite close to the outside of the harvester. We just take a simple 9 degree piece of flat sheet metal, put a hole at the forward offset distance, and a parallel hole on the back side so we can use the horizontal line that we drew on the back of the elevator, line the, line the back hole up on the center line, and you can blind drill into the hole very useful on the inside of the uh, of the tighter mounted har harvesters. Here is the example of what we do on the inside of the John Deere's with a blind drilling template on the center line using a right angle drill to drill the pilot hole and then use the pilot hole, step the pilot hole up with the step drill to full size. Some of our customers even built a a U bracket for the full width of the the elevator and drill pilot holes on the inside and the outside to ensure they were square and able to line drill. Okay, now for sensor and bracket assembly. We have two sensors. 
One is a solid stainless steel housing. The second sensor has a some status lights on the outside. We always mount this sensor on the outside of the harvester. That's the receiver. The transmitter is on the inside. Okay, to start with sensor assembly, spin a nut in from the outside. Put on a lock washer. Slide it over the slotted part of the sensor bracket. Install a second lock washer, a second nut. Assembly should look like that. Then thread on the sensor spacers. They are fairly tight fit. You want to thread them on till the sensor is just proud of the inside face of the spacer. There you'll see the sensor spacer with about a half a thread showing proud of the inside face. For initial assembly, just leave the uh, lock nuts just, just snug and adjust them so the outside of the sensor spacer is cold planar with the outside of the hinge assembly. So it should look approximately like that. Orient the outside sensor so the LED indicators are to the back of the bracket like shown here. These lights will blink whenever the light beam is interrupted by the paddles allowing you to simply test the system by manually turning over the harvester. With the sensor still loose enough in the sensor bracket slot that you can slide it back and forth, mark, put some tape across the, uh, the uh, outside face of the the column. Mark a midpoint from the back to the front as well as draw a perpendicular line from the back face. This will help in orienting the sensor bracket itself. Place the, the sensor face into the hole, three quarter inch hole you drilled and adjust the sensor in the slot so the center line of the leaf lines up with the center line you marked in the column. Orient the leaf so it's parallel with this baseline you drew and that will be the spot you want to install these four pop rivets. Absolute accuracy is not critical here. We like to drill one hole, pop rivet it, and then drill and rivet the remaining three. The inside bracket mounts exactly just a mirror image of the outside bracket. Just less luxury of space to work. Once your brackets are riveted in place and center is uh, lined up over the uh, three quarter inch hole, tighten the jam nuts with the 15 16 wrench. The final step before hooking up the wiring harnesses is to snug the two sensors together with the supply 24 inch zip ties. We adjust them so there's just a little bit of preload on the brackets to keep the center sensor spacer tight against the uh, elevator housing. Yield monitor logger installation strategies will vary quite a bit from model to model. In this case, uh, we have a we have a plastic roof cab, um, which means GPS signals will propagate through it. There is an internal antenna built into the device itself. So you simply can mount the yield monitor anywhere along the center line of the cab and plug the harness into it. On the CR series, we like to put the monitor right here in this, uh, this back overhead uh, compartment and run an external antenna that we mount in front of the cab, uh, the cab light. There's switch power available right behind the radio. So we take this panel off, run the harness down the uh, inside of this molding, out the side of the combine and back to the sensor assembly. Most of the newer combines have uh, switch power uh, auxiliary cables laying in the cab ready to use. On the, uh, the newer New Holland and uh, Case IH harvesters, uh, there's an orange black pair laying in the cab just behind the radio that you can tap into. Orange uh, for the uh, switch hot. 
and of course black for ground. The kit ships with two pairs of butt splice connectors to tee on to a switch hot and ground wires. The red connectors are for number 18 and higher wires and the blue is for number 16 and lower. The connectors themselves simply tee on to the wire by placing the wire into the uh, into the U, closing the connector over, and then squeezing with a uh, with a pair of pliers. Once you hear the click, you have a uh, splice connector ready to be tapped onto. Repeat that for the uh, ground side. You're ready to connect the. Uh, the harness up to the uh, cab power system. After you crimped your, your your splice connectors onto your power system, the wiring harness connectors simply push in. There's a slot on the end. There's a there's a blade on the uh, on the harness assembly. The two meet together. Push till they click together like that. Of course, repeat that for the uh, black ground connection as well. Uh, you need to sort out your antenna mounting strategy if you're not going to mount the uh, the uh, data logger on the center line of the cab. Uh, in our case, we have placed it up in the headliner forward of the light. Uh, this is the connector ribbit. Simply thread that onto the SMA connector on the back of the data logger. Plug the DB15 connector into the back. Tighten the two screws. There's some double-sided tape mounted on the bottom of the box for, for securing it in a fixed location. Drop it in here. And you're ready to connect the wiring harness down by the sensors. Okay, final step of wiring. Uh, we've brought the, uh, the main wiring harness down from the cab where it's plugged into switch power and the data logger is hooked up. This is the other end of that cable. Uh, you want to have a routing strategy that's mindful of all the moving parts on the harvester. So we're going to pick up the uh, existing uh, cable and hydraulic run here and just follow that along to the uh, to the to the center of the combine and uh, and then and then hook up with the main sensor assembly here. This is the sensor interconnect cable. Uh, there's a uh, larger connector with a short run to the uh, to uh, a Y connection where the two optical sensors uh, will connect into. The larger connector is where the main wiring harness plugs into. The rest of the harness just coil it up for the time being. Next year we hope to have some uh, new products to plug into this connector here. Here's our two optical sensors the connection to the main hiring harness and the future sensor uh, cable that for this year we'll just coil up and store for safekeeping. Final step is to secure all the cables with zip ties supplied and you're ready to run up the system. There's no convenient place to tie wrap the first run of the, the cables off the sensors. Uh, so we drilled a small 532nd hole here so we can run a zip tie through it and secure the cables right to the uh, elevator uh, assembly itself. With the key in the aux position you'll see the Amber light should be on all the time and slightly inboard will be the green LED. This will blink every time the beam is broken by a paddle. If you manually turn the machine over, 
you will see the uh, green light flash.